Hey everyone, this is Dustin with Hinterland Customs, and this is a final video for my KV-2 uh, battle tank from World War II. It was built by the Russian Army. Uh, it was built at the Kirov plant in Leningrad, which is now known as St. Petersburg. And uh, that's what the writing on the on the side of the turret means. Uh, this this build uh, I didn't do a dial for it. This was basically just a build for me to I want for, number one I wanted to build a KV-2. I built a KV-1 and a KV-8, which are essentially both is a KV-1. But the KV-2 with the big turret, I, I always was fascinated by this tank ever since I saw it. I thought it was just a cool-looking tank. It's a little bit ridiculous. It's different. It's obnoxious. It's, it's strange. Whatever you want to call it, um, it's it's just different, you know. And so uh, that's that's what I like to do. I just like to build, you know, what I think is cool or, or different. It doesn't have to be something that was... Uh, great in the battlefield or anything like that but uh, this this thing is just an old robust piece of iron and um anyway this kit originally was a radio controlled toy and so i thought they did a pretty good job of transferring over from being you know a radio controlled toy to a, a buildable model kit um i built some cars in the past or like showroom replicas and they're kind of hit and miss on that stuff but i felt to me uh, you know for this is an old kit i mean this this has been around a while and uh, I, I felt like they did a really good job with it. Uh, these tanks, there's not much to them. You know, there's you have your upper and lower hull. Um, you've got your side fenders, which you've got some toolboxes there, as you can see. And then I flip it around here. Uh, you've got your diesel tanks here. You've got some uh, some extra tracks here. These are actually frugal model tracks that I had left over from the Kursk build. Uh, the Kursk dial I did. Um, and anyway... Uh, then you got your big turret there. You got your iron door in the back. You've got your machine gun out the back. Um, this what, one thing I wanted to practice with with this tank was chipping. And what was kind of funny is that I, I found out I didn't do a great job on the chipping. I, it didn't work out as well as it had in the past. And so then I, you know I conversed with some some of my friends that are armor builders and found out what I did wrong. Uh, so I know what to do better next time. Let the paint dry a little too long. Uh, another cool method I used was, uh, using the, uh, Zippo lighter fluid, um, along with, uh, some oil pastels and that, that would help me bleach up the top a little bit, lighten it up a little bit. I don't do pre-shading, so I haven't tried that technique yet. So, um, I kind of like to work this way anyway, just kind of from the outside in, so to speak. Uh, so that worked out pretty good. I, I like the way it looks anyway, if, you know, it's not perfect, but, um, it, you know, it, it turned out it, it it gave me the confidence to try some new things, and uh, you know, they went it went well. I felt uh, the third thing I think another thing I liked was um, I needed to make sure that my tracks and my wheels were the same kind of color. Uh, and I say that because I've done some tanks in the past where I'm weathering them, and again, very novice. This is the sixth battle tank I've ever built. Um, in the past, the wheels and tracks uh, always seem to be kind of different colors. And, of course, it depends on what you're building it for, you know. But um, realistically, if it's a well-traveled tank like this, the, the, the grime and the color of the dirt and everything should be pretty much the same, I feel, on the tracks as well as on the road wheels and the idlers and everything. So um, I used uh, lighter pigments. I used some, uh, what was it called, yellow okra Um light oxide something like that i can't even remember what it's called now it was a uh, light okra maybe it was what it's called and then a dusty wash uh, that was all vallejo i believe and then just kind of mixed everything together and put it on there and it, yeah I, f I feel like I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out um it's leaps and bounds from what i've done in the past so um definitely felt good to have progress um i guess the last thing the tow cables uh gosh do you want me to rant about tow cables? Uh, they're not easy to put on. I don't enjoy putting them on. The thing I find with tow cables with these KV tanks, and I've mentioned this before, uh, they're not in scale. These, I don't feel, are in scale. I don't feel the ones that come with the kit are in scale. If you look on the photographs, they're pretty big, thick, heavy cables. And the thing is, is that these couplers that and the hooks that come to connect to them seem very small and and you can't you know you can't have a you know a cable that's diameter is bigger than what it's actually hooking into so i'm not sure what's going on there um 
but it's something I've noticed more than once, uh, several times, and it, it is what it is. You know, so what I wanted to do is just make sure the tow cables looked decent. Um, they're they lay down fairly well. They're not bent too much. You know, they're they're thick, heavy steel braided cables. So I used uh, hanging picture wire, and uh, I painted it um, dark steel, uh, the Vallejo dark steel uh, from the Mecca line, and then I just went over that with a. Uh, I believe it was a Wilder's uh, uh, light rust, I think, just just to kind of tin it up a little bit, make it look a little used. And uh, it worked out okay. So, um, yeah, the turret, uh, really enjoyed doing that. I really wanted to make it look um, weathered. You know, I just wanted to look, make it look like it had been out there for a while and driving through different weather conditions and sitting around and so forth. So, um, anyway... That's it, guys. That's all I got on it. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the subscribers out there and uh, hope everybody's doing good. I think i uh, got to give a shout out to, uh, to all those guys going to Act the Acme show in Atlanta. Um, a lot of them have uh, reached out to me in the past and said, you got to go to this show, come and see us, you know. Uh, hopefully someday I will, you know, but that is over 2,000 miles from where I live. So it's, uh, you know, right now it's just it's just not easy to get away. Um and there's there's no way I could if I drove I guess that's one thing but I'm not gonna fly and bring a model down there to display because it'll just end up destroyed in flight so you guys know how that goes uh, but anyway I appreciate all the the kind comments that have been coming in and uh, I, I've really enjoyed seeing uh, all the fun you guys are having at the show so uh, that's it you know KV2 love the tank love the build yeah it's a fun kit I want to build more um, one last note. Uh, the Kirov plant that I mentioned, uh, I, I'd like to do a dio in the future of this, a diorama. And uh, I've got enough parts left over from the past three KV, KV tank builds now um, that I thought it'd be cool to build a dio of the, the Kirov plant and just have, you know, the chains lowering this turret down on the, the, the upper hole there and to have a bunch of parts bins in the background with all this stuff in them. I thought that would, uh, I thought that'd be a cool idea for a diorama. So, um. I, that's another thing I've got to work towards is, is working in scratch building structures for dioramas. So anyway, I've talked enough. Uh, fun kit. If you ever just starting out in tanks, grab you a Tamiya kit. Grab you a KV-2. Grab you a Panther or the Walker Bulldog. Those are all great kits to start with. And, um, you know, they give you a lot of surface area to deal with as well. Good to practice weathering and, and everything. So you guys take care out there. This is Hinterland, and I'm out.